So we've done some debugging stuff to try and get your stuff running as optimally as possible, optimizationally as possible. Yeah, hopefully that's helpful. A few things you could go through if you're having trouble making this stuff run. Now, a few things that you can go through if you're having trouble making this stuff look the way you want it to. We're gonna go through one thing to start with and then see if we can squeeze in a few more tips on uh, general problems you might run into when lighting your scene and getting your scene out via spout. Let's check it out then. So I've got my scene here. First off, let's do, let's really quickly deal with this flickering that's going on when I move this stuff around. So I've got a reflective material and it's also being blurred, getting a lot of strange artifacts coming up flickering. So one thing that may sort this out is uh, if you go here, you can go distance in, uh, in project settings, you can go distance fields, uh, generate mesh distance fields. Um, this will tell me to restart. So while it's doing that, we can just have a look at what those are. Mesh distance fields are something that you can you can enable in your lighting settings, and it's a kind of form of ray tracing to get uh, some ambient occlusion. So the image on the right here is like the shadow map of where it's like darker and lighter, uh, and you know here's the actual render. But it's showing where the shadows are, where some ambient occlusion is happening, e.g things bouncing off of objects onto other objects. Just kind of a, a way that the renderer calculates some of this stuff. So enabling mesh distance fields can give you effects. Uh, See, so by upping this resolution, you can get a more accurate shadow map kind of representation. Something to look at in general, uh, something you can check out in the documentation. But I just came across it through one of Windbush's videos as a quick tip on stopping this flickering. So I guess you can get kind of artifacts coming up. That's my level, let's have a look and select the light uh, and go distance fields for that. Click distance fields shadow and you need to do this for any lights that are giving you grief. Uh, it's still building these distance fields so we'll let it do that. Okay, so it built those distance fields for us. Uh, I think you have to go in and build lighting as well. Okay, okay, cool. So we got our lighting back. Let's see the result. Let's play. We've got less, we've definitely got less. Around these edges, it kind of kind of goes a bit weird. But if the camera's static, even at even with the focus pulls, it's looking pretty good, pretty good indeed. Um, quite a lot better. Um, other ways to meddle with the uh, is to just look at your focus settings. Um, so if we pilot the camera that we're using, we could go into the cine camera settings and look at the kind of depth field settings. Uh, mm, current camera settings, focus settings. I've got some automation on this setup, so I'll look at upping that focus offset. Even that zero. Uh, maximum min f-stop is a good one for this. And if we're still getting some of these, what we can do because it's, uh, the material is kind of to blame for this with its reflections. We can just look at the material settings. We can also look at the light settings and just try and get something that looks looks like what you want as much as possible. But also, you know, we got some really nice reflection here. It's like a slimy little room, but we can get away with a little less, I reckon, and hopefully uh, reduce that effect. Let's make it a little more rough. Yeah, tweaking those values. We've Reduced it even more, quite nicely. R pretty good now. Literally just got a tiny bit of flickering here. Stop that. Could reduce the light intensity of this backlight. This us usually comes up when you're backlighting. Annoyingly enough, when you've got some nice backlighting going on, this tends to come up. But put this down to one, and we are pretty much totally sound. Still got the nice elements of the material going on. We can do some focus pulls, but yeah, the, the flashing is pretty much gone. A few more tests looking around, it's not too bad. One more trick that uh, I've got Langrid William to thank for is pressing the tilde key above tab and just type r dot temporal r dot tem temporal aa upsampling. This is temporal ambient occlusion, so it's a similar thing to that distance field ambient occlusion we were looking at earlier. And press zero after and enter. This is making an edit to the quality of your focus pools, uh, which 
doesn't seem to make much difference, but that's something you can try. It's basically just a combination, what I'm finding is it seems to be a combination of those things you want to look at. If you can get away with uh, the first method of that distance field occlusion, that can be really good. If you, can, if you can't do that, you might want to tweak your lighting. If you can't do that, you might want to tweak your focus pools. And if you can't do that, you might want to tweak your materials. Uh, just a case of getting the balance right there, really. So yeah, little, little. Bounties.